Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. We have a Lunar Tunic by Christy Simpson for a red heart. So what we have here is four granny squares that are put together in order to form this tunic. So once you understand how to start this, you'll understand how to do the shaping of it. It's actually really, really simple. I almost think this is a beginner level project for somebody that's a little bit ambitious but definitely easy level as well. So there's actually a number of granny squares. So let's talk about that first. On page number three we have what you see as the assembly. So you're seeing that it's just asking you not to sew them all the way up and to leave these spaces here and what you're seeing here is the straps. So the strap is just going from one to the other and the other strap is going from one to the other. So it, you can see that it's just a really amazing. So when you look at it from this perspective, one point goes to the other point, the other point goes to the other point like so. So because this ball transitions in color, they decided to, and you use two balls pretty much. I used the same ball coloring. So for example, I used two of these. Okay, so you can see that I did that. And so the coloring of it actually matches. So I did the first square with the ball and then I did the second square with the same ball. I then grabbed the second ball and did the first square and the second. So I appear to have exactly what you see here. So you see that there's two blues and, and etc. So when she's from the back here, you can see that it looks like this color here and when you see it from the front, it looks like that. So if this bothers you a little bit, just use a solid color yarn but I think it's actually really quite effective as well. So all it is is for these. So you're gonna see a lot of writing in the instructions. So let me break that down for you because there's really not that much to do. So in the tutorial when I get you started we need to make four of these squares and you're gonna see a lot of writing. It's actually really quite simple. I'm gonna take you through it. So you'll see that there's two pages like this and you're like wow it's a lot of instructions but it really is not. So what they've done is they, they've outlined the instructions for every row but once you understand how it's growing out it's really really quite simple. The difference that you see round number 13 is the small, medium and etc. So you finish off on the round that it's gonna suggest. So my particular sample is done in the medium size so you can see that the medium is fastening off after round 14. So all I'm doing is that once I get started on one of these squares it's just I know how many uh, rounds to do based on the count that it's telling you to do. So round number 14 told me to get rid of that's when the ending of the medium is. So there's more instructions the larger that it is. So if you wanna make this even larger, this only goes to two extra large. You just gotta keep making your granny squares even bigger in order to be able to match that out. We're then going to do the assembly where we're going to then just attach it and we're gonna whip stitch it together. So what I decided to do for myself is that because the ball transitions, if for example you're using this color and this is where you're ending, if you keep using the ball it eventually transition to a different color completely. So at the end of each one of these ones, I just rolled exactly the same color that was in the very last round and so this will be my sewing strands and I did this for all four of the bells. That doesn't mean you need to use all four but now you have choices that match this. As long as the same color matches at least one side of the join it will work together. It's when you have the color that is joining them completely different that's when you'll notice it. So that's uh, something that you can keep an eye on. So the inside of the granny square let's talk a little bit about that because it's slightly different than what you may be used to. So when we look at the interior of this, you're going to notice a few things that is gonna throw you off. If you're a regular crocheter, you're gonna notice this will throw you off. And what it is is that at the very start here, you have chain fours for your corner corners. It's normally chain two. So the corners are a lot much wider in order for you to do that. You're also going to start doing this mesh work and the mesh work uses the first grouping of four. So there's not only just four chains but there's four double crochet, chain four, four double crochet in each of these corners. That's kind of unusual. When you do the mesh work, you're gonna notice that the first stitch out is going to be a double crochet into the last double crochet of this and then it starts jumping over. So once you can start seeing the jumping, the jumping is in the same spot each and every time. So it's really not that hard to do. The difference is that you just gotta put in the time. And when you use different colors here at the ball, is that you'll see that it will turn out really quite differently. So it's really neat. So it transitions from a, a more of a white into this darker blue and of course as I mentioned already I kept the yarn that matches the outside of this so that it will match completely as well. So let's uh, go on and let me show you how to do this. You're gonna need a five millimeter size H crochet hook. We're using It's a Wrap Rainbow today as our choice. If you wanna switch out the yarns that's completely up to you but I think it's really quite effective. I am also then gonna demonstrate how to whip the stitch these together. Uh, just to, for clarity, I actually have got everything already crocheted so I'm just gonna show you how to get started and you can stop on the round that it's suggesting for the size that you're looking to do. 
Let's begin and we're gonna create a slip knot to begin and put a five millimeter size age crochet hook in there. So the yarn is a lot thinner than the hook require, is required because it wants to be lacy. So usually the size of um, yarn would be a lot thinner because this is a level two yarn. You're gonna chain four. So one, two, three and four and insert your hook into the beginning chain. So just going right in and just yarning over and pulling it through everything on the hook. And that will form the very center ring of your project. So it's gonna be a little bit tight. You'll get used to it and we will then start. So just pull things open so you can see the start and then we're gonna begin round number one. So usually in granny squares when we start we chain three. So let's do that. So one, two, three and we only put two double crochets into the ring. This case is not. There's gonna be four uh, double crochets in each of these corners that we're gonna be doing. So you have to add three double crochet into the center of that ring. Once you get the center of the ring started it's just easier to hold it. So just take your time and get the center and let's just count. So the very first chain of three plus this one now equals two. And so the goal is is to get a total of four. So just do the next two. So I always try to teach you like the chain threes and etc. always count as a stitch when they do. So you should see a total of four. Now you're gonna turn a corner and the corners for this entire project are going to be chaining a four. So one, two, three and four and it seems extreme but that's what's making it lacy. So inside the center of the ring keep the straggler down inside so that you can keep it buried underneath and put in four double crochet. And you wanna do this for every side. So there will be a total of four sides that you will be able to see. Once you get that side done, chain four to turn. So one, two, three, four and in the ring again, four more double crochet. This yarn takes a little bit of getting used to because it applies but once you get to understand it, it's pretty cool. So chain four to turn again. So one, two, three, four. Let's do our last side. So there's another four double crochet in there. So we have one, two, three and four. Now we're not quite done. We have to finish the last corner. You see it's still missing. So chain four. So one, two, three and four and slip stitch to the top of the chain three to finish. And you'll leave this yarn attached for the entire project and then you'll move on to the next round. If you've been bearing up over top of the middle now is the time to get rid of it so it's not in your way and just snip it out and let's begin round number two. So let's pick it up again and let's do number two. So number two we're gonna start off and we're going to chain five. This is gonna be a constant analysis when we're going to do this one. So let's just chain five. So the first three, one, two, three is considered a double crochet and the four, five is considered a chain two space. If you can remember that you're laughing. Into the next corner that you'll run into it'll be the same thing as what you already know. So there's gonna be four double crochets first. So one, two, three and four and you need to turn the corner so you have to chain four. One, two, three, four and coming into the same one again and put in four double crochet. So one, two, three and four. Now in between everything you're gonna notice this chain two. So chain two and in this case the corner is next. So we're gonna do another corner just like you saw. So four double crochets. So let's begin that. And then chain four to turn. And then four double crochet.
and now to jump you're gonna chain two. So the chain two is gonna be a constant. You'll see that in the future. So the corner is next so you'll do the cor another corner. chain two to jump and then you're gonna come into the last one. So what's special about the corner on this particular round is that the first chain three is considered the last double crochet of this corner. So you're gonna just go in and put in four double crochet first. And then chain four to turn. And instead of putting four double crochet in the last one here, you're only gonna put three because that's considered the last one. So in the last one you'll put in three double crochet. And once that third one is in there, you're going to join it to the third chain up. So you wanna maintain the chain two space in between. And so that was round number two. So now the mesh work that we're about to start is gonna happen in the next round and then that will continue to build up right until the very end. So let's start row number, round number three which will be a constant for the whole thing. So you're gonna chain five. So one, two, three is considered a double crochet and four, five is a chain two space. In the first double crochet on the next group here you will put in a double crochet. You're now creating mesh. To move to the next corner you're gonna chain two and then start your corner again. So the corners are always gonna be the same with the four, four and four. The trick to this whole thing is after you come out of the corner on what you're gonna do. So in this case you're gonna chain two just like you had before but now you're gonna come into the last one of the grouping of four that's directly underneath and you're gonna double crochet and then you're gonna do a chain two which matches this chain two and then double crochet in the one right after that. So you see how the mesh is keeping up and then chain two and then start another corner. So do this all the way around and I'll see you back here in just a moment and we'll finish that last one off together. When you get all the way back around I'm just in the last corner of chain two and I'm just going to slip stitch into the third chain up that I started with. Remember it was chain five so it's the third chain up. So you will always end up finishing on the mesh and this mesh then is always gonna be the same spot straight up but you'll notice that, that when you get bigger and bigger it'll still be up in the middle and it's really highly unnoticeable. So let me just get you started on one more round so that you get it. So you're gonna chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. Come into the next double crochet. In this case it's mesh and then chain two and the corner happens to be next. So then you're gonna go into the first double crochet of, of that one and then chain two and then go right into the corner. So the corner is gonna be the same. So four, four and four. So because this is very meshy it really honestly does not take a long time to do this top. So now that the corner is done you're going to chain two and you're gonna come into the very last one of this grouping of four that is part of the corner from the row below. Go into that one and then chain two and now the mesh is next. So you just match the mesh to each other and then chain two to keep the distance. Go to the next mesh and then chain two to keep that distance. In this case the corner is next so you're gonna come only to the first one of the grouping of four. So I understood that why they wanted you to do four in the corner because you need to identify that one and keep the spacing equal. So that's kind of smart. So chain two 
and then you do your corner again four, four, and four, so four doubles and then chain four and then four doubles and I'll meet you at the end of this round and then I'm gonna leave the rest of this for you to be able to solve and then you're gonna stop on the round that matches the size that you want so you can see that on the pattern. So I'm doing the medium size so I finished all of mine on round number 14 as being complete and then I'm gonna demonstrate then how to whip stitch it together. So I'll see you at the end of this round. So just come out of the last corner here and so this is where we started. So you'll notice that this will stay perfectly in line all the way up so it, the corner, the last corner will get further and further away from this. So you're just still gonna chain your two. You're still going to put one double crochet in the last group here and then chain two and then join to the third chain up of your beginning chain five. And then to restart another round you just chain up five again, double crochet in the first, chain two, double crochet in the next, chain two, go into the first one, chain two, then do your corner. Then you'll do the chain two and then do the last one of this group and then chain two and then keep doing your meshes all the way around. So it's just a matter of getting the work done. So when you look at a finished example, like see, it's just a matter of just continuing to go and you will find yourself at least for me the first one that I did was tighter than the rest of them because I was still getting used to the pattern but uh, it will stretch and that's the beauty thing about this. So it's very lacy and it should form to your body perfectly. So let's uh, cover on how to put things together. So get all of this done first before we move on, before you move on to the assembly but I am going to move on to that point next. So what I decided to do is that I did my 14 and I decided to take enough yarn that I could use the same color. So when you go in all the way around you're going to notice that it's transitioning in color. So I took enough of this so that I could at least same up two sides. I'm not gonna use it for both sides but at least I have options because if I was to go and look at that ball right now and I see that there's a different tone of blue it's gonna be noticeable. So when you're joining two different motifs together and one is a different color than the rest then what's gonna happen is that it's gonna be very noticeable if at least one of the colors doesn't match. So as long as one color matches the other it will not be noticeable but if you're using something completely different, let me just say this red for example, you'll notice that. So you wanna decide to do that. So I made these mini little balls after each one of those squares so that I have options for when I'm about to put it together. So let's go back to the instructions and I'm gonna show you what we need to do from this point because now we gotta put the four panels together. So our goal is, is to leave amount of space in order to make this work. So you're gonna see a strap that is coming down and attaching to the other side. You're also going to notice that we're gonna be doing a little bit of trim work after, after this as well or before we do the strap. So we're gonna do the trim work first after it's put together then we're gonna do the strap. But you notice that there's distance is coming down. So in the particular cases when you're going to do this, so if this is the um, small, medium or large you are going to drop down six inches in order to get this and then the other sizes are either seven inches, seven inches or eight. So you have to look at the size that you're about to do and then measure down and then that's where you're gonna start your seam and go all the way down. You're gonna do this for all of the sides here so that it'll be the same. So this one coming here. They just pulled it apart um, visually just so that you understand that but each one is just dropping down. So you wanna take a tape measure and then just drop down and then just being able to put together. So let's do that first. And so you wanna be very conscious when you're putting on the straps where the straps are gonna go so that at least one side can at least be the one color and if of course if you wanna play with the colors you can do that as well. So let's just measure down and let's attach. So we wanna put the meshes together so I have these mini balls. If you wanna slip stitch them together too instead of sewing you can do that as well. You wanna make sure that both of these squares have the right side facing up and they match each other. So make sure that they are 14 rounds each and then you may wanna deal with your, uh, your any loose ends that you may have. And so I want to measure down in my case six inches. I'm gonna say that that is the top. So I'm just gonna measure down six inches and see where I get and it's about right there. So what I can do is that as long as, I'm gonna see if the holes match each other going back up. So I'm gonna one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. So I'm gonna leave this open and then I'm going to put this together. So you can either whip stitch it together. So you put it, uh, get that strand of yarns that I had you uh, put aside and you wanna put that into um, a needle. So I'm not gonna need all of it. I'm just gonna need a piece of it. And I want to create a slip knot on the one side. So keep a long strand 
So then you can use that to be able to um, hide that loose end in. And you wanna get a tapestry needle. So you really wanna pay attention to where the gapping spaces are to match each other. So on the other side, you're gonna feed this through. And the reason why I did the slip knot on the other side is that once I go through, so I'm just gonna attach right where that went through. And when I get to the other side here is that I wanna put this, I know it's probably hard to see, I wanna put that slip knot around there so it's through and then it will lock onto the project so you can pull it tight. So this is called the whip stitch and all I'm just going to do then is just match stitch to stitch and space to space. You can be a little bit jumping like you don't have to be every stitch and you're just gonna go around each of the stitches going across. So just jumping down. Stay within the chain work itself. So try not to go right into a space itself. Stay right into the chain and just match it. And you need to do this for all of them. So these two are now coming together. So these two then will attach to the next two that will be up top here and that will probably be the back or the front depending on what you, what you wanna do with this particular idea. So whip stitch everything together and then I'll see you back here in just a moment. When you get all the way to the bottom, all you just need to do is just tie it into a knot and then you're gonna take that stra straggler and just go back and forth three times. So the long straggler that we left at the beginning of this when we started sewing will also be hidden into the project. So just go back and do that. And if you put it through three times, it should never fall out on you. Especially if you're wearing it and you end up with the tail kinda hanging out. So you wanna do that and then go back to the where you started with the tail which is up here. I know it's kinda hard to see. Take that tail and also just weave it in through the seam line back and forth three times. So now I'm gonna attach another square. So make sure the right side is facing up and then eventually you'll attach the one that's on the top here. So what I would recommend if I were you and you were me, I would count the number of spaces on this side here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So there's 10 empty spaces before the join. So what I would do here is count down 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So the first one is right there. So I already put the stitch marker, uh, stitch on, uh, the yarn on. I've just chosen this col the darker color. Again, that's up to you. And I already have the, the slip knot in there so that I can place it in and lock that. And it also has a long tail so I can secure that later. So now that the first one is going in, what I can just do then is work my way down from there so the top is open. And you can also leave the straggler here around inside this as well. So you can go right up over top of it. So if you hold the straggler, just make sure you're circling over top of it and that's a great way to hide it too. Or you can just leave it and come back. Again, match the stitch to stitch, space to space, but always go in through some chain work and go all the way down. I'm gonna leave the rest of the joining for you to do. So at this point, everything is sewn together and I have the open space right in the middle. I can start anywhere I want to, but I'm gonna start just in one of these double crochets that are just before the very edge here. And then what we're gonna do is go up over top of the edge and then down. And let's begin to go there next. So just grab in your yarn and let's attach to the first double crochet that we have. Going right in. And we're going to do a chaining of three which will count as a double crochet. So one, two, three. So let's slowly go around the top of this and let me show you what to do. Now that we did our chain three, we're now going to make our way to the top peak. But we have to do our link double crochet before we get there. So because we just started, we're gonna go second chain from the hook and insert the hook in. And then yarning over pulling it through. And then just insert your hook into the next stitch and yarning over pulling it through. And you'll have three loops on the hook and you finish that right like a regular double crochet. So pull through two and two. And this is what this is doing is it's linking midway through. So now that the first one is done, see this horizontal bar right there? That's where you're gonna go. So you're just gonna go that one, pull through and next stitch pull through. And then it looks like a regular double crochet at this point. So pull through two and two. And you're gonna do that until you get all the way to the point. Which is gonna be next. 
now that you've gone to the point we want to apply four linked in double or linked double crochet at this point. So it's continuing with what you know. So just going in the horizontal bar, pull through, going into the space. So let's just do say that's one. This is two. Three. This is four. Now to turn the corner to at the top peak, all you're just gonna do is chain three. So one, two, and three, and apply three more linked double crochet. So just going in, so one, two, and three. It's a little bit of a fiddly stitch uh, especially with such thin yarn but of course if you wanna do something different you can always do that. So now we're gonna start working our way down and then we'll end up in between and then coming back up. So here's what we're going to do. So now that we've gone through the peak we're going to apply one LinkedIn double crochet for each stitch that goes. That includes these chain two spaces. So it's gonna bring everything nicely together. So continuing with what you already know just one linked for every stitch or chain. Now in the chain two if you don't wanna go into the actual chain itself you could probably go into the space. You'll have to determine what you think works for you. And then what I'll be doing is that I'll do that and I'll come back at the at the bottom of this section where it's going to join back up here. So I'm coming close to the very bottom here where it joins and then I'm gonna have you heading back up and what you already know at the top remember that it was four links and then you had uh, chain uh, three and then three links in order to do the, these um, top peaks. At the base here I'm just continuing to do my link double crochet. It does get faster. It's just a matter of getting used to the stitch. It's kind of unusual. I love this stitch to be honest with you. Um, I've used it in other ways and uh, I've been very pleased with that on how it links and makes everything nice and tight. So for this closing it actually makes a lot of sense. So right at the top of the seam is where we're gonna be heading next. I just have one more space to do. So let's link it first. And in the top of the space here it's doing three together double crochet. So just going right into the space itself is just where the join is. And then just do three double crochets together. And then just start on the other side. So you can link it because that was a double crochet that we just did. So link it and then start on the other side. And kind of match what you did on the one side versus the other side. I only put one here and now I'm gonna start in the double crochet then heading back up. And then I'm gonna go to the peak and etc. and go all the way around just like that. When you get all the way back around then what you can just do is just slip stitch to the beginning of the, uh, the stitch. Just for full transparency I did half double crochet in each of the chain two spaces. So there was two in each of the chain two spaces and one each in the double crochets that I ran into. I still did the three together for half double crochet at the base when they attached down here. So you're just going to join and then you're just going to slip stitch, um, sorry slip stitch to the end with your join and then you're gonna get rid of this color and then we're gonna begin to do the straps. So the straps are really really super easy and you can adjust those straps to make it customized for you just in case you think it's too uh, long or it's too short. So I'll show you how to do that. Make sure you take a tapestry needle to weave in the ends here just for tutorial reasons. I'm just gonna leave it off to the side for now and then let's just bring our project and let's just fold it properly onto the table and let's figure out what to do next. So now I just folded it. So one color, so I have one square, one square. The same color is on the one side and then the other square and this square are on the back side. So what I wanna do is that I wanna join a strap from this front 
to the back here and then this front to the back here. If I fold it in a different way I could literally have on one outfit that one side of, of it would be one color and one would be the other. That's a, again your call. You are the artist. So let's begin on the top of the chain three space right in the peak and the straps are really easy. So you can just change the length of the straps in order to match your own creativity. To do this strap we're just gonna create a slip knot and put it onto the hook first and we're gonna go to the chain three space at the top of the peak and we wanna join it and then we wanna chain two. So one and two which will count as a stitch and then three half double crochets into the same one. So it's the right side of the project facing me at this moment when I go to join it. So there will be three. So that gives you a total of four. To keep moving you're just gonna turn it around. So I wouldn't turn the whole project just the strap. Chain two which counts as the first half double crochet and then you're just going to double crochet, half double crochet in the next three. So there always will remain four as your magic number. Now it gives you the number of rows that you can complete for this. So once you get that done just turn it back. Chain two that's your first stitch and then half double crochet in the next three. So what I would do if I were you and you were me I would actually do one strap completely and uh, to the specifications that it states on the pattern and then just uh, give it a try and see if it's gonna work and if not then you can adjust it at that time and if it's um, if you need to add more then great and if you think it's a little bit too droopy you can just take out a few of the rows and then once you have that done you can just do the other side of the strap to match. Once you're satisfied with the length of this you're just gonna take the opposite side here. So just make sure it truly is and you're just going to just join it with the slip stitch that is in the back. So just coming into the strap and just slip stitch into the chain three space a total of three times. So once It's kind of a little difficult with all these little plies but it does work. You just gotta not be, you just not gotta be in a rush and you wanna slip all the way across then on your strap. So all four of those stitches are going to get in. And you keep working like that. Then once you have that uh, completely attached so obviously it will be a lot longer than this but once you get that done just cut that yarn and just weave in your ends and then you'll be good to go. So then both of your straps will be done in the same manner and uh, you'll see that it's gonna hold pretty good and I think it's pretty awesome. So this is how you would do that if I were you and you were me. Um, the half double crochet around the edge I thought it was a little bit easier than the length but of course follow that uh, diagram or follow the instructions if you feel you wanna match it stitch to stitch and of course you can always change things. If you would like to add a little bit of a border to the base of this you'll have enough yarn to do that. You can just trace it around on the base and overall it's actually a pretty easy pattern to be able to do. So until next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at yarnspirations.com. Please enjoy and we hope to see you again real soon.